Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost told me the other day, the reset is in place. And uh, I said, well, that's not the end of the year, Lord. I said, you know, that's just that's our annual thing, you know, that we have at the end of the year. I said, because, you know, we got the new year. And he said, it ain't got nothing to do with no day on no calendar. It has nothing to do with no, you know, human measurement of time. It's, it's as I move and as my spirit moves. And I want you to know something. Amen. That uh, there is a uh, way of thinking that has finally become internalized. By George, you have got it. You understand it. I mean, this is really something that has come to a aha moment. Oh, I get it. He said, now. Now we're moving into the phase of change. As a matter of fact, I've already started on our calendar for next year. I'm almost done with it. But uh, 2022 is the year of change. And uh, oh boy, I tell you, it's going to be some really change, major changes. I mean, this, I mean this, see, as you change the way you think, you come into a different way of being. Change always starts with revelation. Revelation and then change. There is truth and then there's transformation. It's just a process where it starts with the introduction of reality. And then that brings me into the place of reality. And so um, you becoming the uh, manager of your mindset. Your mindset is not a concept anymore. Your mindset is your identity. Faith is not something that is some kind of principle, but it has become the way you live, the way that you are. You are inherently a believer and everything revolves around that. That is the main faculty at work in your life. And that is the basis of what you do how you do it, and everything about you. And so we're entering into a phase of change. And this phase of change has to do with you being the manager of yourself. God told me that um, the most powerful ministry is the ministry you do to yourself. He said, as a... Uh, as a teacher, as a pastor, as the person who is uh, giving you the word, my aim is for the word to become so internalized in you that I literally work myself out of a job. And that the main proponent of the word is coming from within you. You are the main minister to yourself. Um, as a matter of fact, you have the greatest influence on yourself, greatest inroad. You are naturally fitted to be your minister. And so God said, I want you to just talk about ministering to yourself, learning how to minister to yourself, understanding. And, and there are three things, three things associated with this. And we talked a little bit about this in our Bible study on uh, Tuesday. I just want to give you three areas related to this, okay? I'm going to do three fingers. So first of all, it is has to do with living. Make sure, make sure I don't, I don't, I don't get them on. Okay. First off, off is living by the word, 
meeting of the words, allowing the word to be the basis of what or how you live. Secondly, is maintaining a proportion, uh, an amount of faith. That's number two. Having sufficient faith, this has to do with your preparation. This has to do with your conditioning. And then, um, and third, having a posture of keeping or maintaining. Okay, let me just briefly, because I want to go to my sheet. But let me just briefly explain what I mean by those three components. There's three aspects of what we mean to minister to yourself. Number one, to live by the word means to, to allow the word to be the basis of what you think, how you think. It means to operate in the reality of God and the reality of God's word. It means to make the choice that I'm going to believe what the word says and nothing else. And then I'm going to talk about that a lot today. And then the second thing is the, um, the quantity of your faith. And the reason why this is so critical is because um, the greatest measure of how much faith you have is how you react. How you react to situations. When you have the sufficient amount of faith, you can react with faith. And your mindset must match the situation you face. You must have uh, the capacity and it literally is capacity. You have to have the uh, wherewithal where whatever comes up, you can bring a mindset that allows you to not just endure, but to prevail. See, when the disciples reacted to that storm, Jesus asked them, where is your faith? In other words, felt this is not about the storm. It's about your lack of being able to have in your reservoir what's needed so that you don't overreact. Overreacting is an indication of how much faith you have. And as I was telling you last time, it really is not just the fact that you have faith. You have to have enough faith. A couple of times Jesus said, O oh, ye of little faith. One translation says, O oh, ye of insufficient faith. I mean, you know, why are you, and you got to ask yourself sometimes, why am I acting on this? I'll tell you why. You don't have enough mindset. You don't have enough faith. And so the conditioning of yourself in terms of your meditation, your focus, the literal um, thinking of the truth, memorizing, allowing the word to be your focus, allows you to be equipped and prepared and make no bones about it. It always comes down to how prepared you are. Don't even think about winning or success if you're not prepared. We about to start the football season and it's not going to be the team that's most talented. That's going to be the best team. It's going to be the teams that are prepared to play, to handle adversity, to handle difficult. And uh, nothing prepares you like the word. Nothing prepares you like the truth. You know, I hesitate to tell you this because I'm not, I don't want you to think I'm bragging or trying to, you know, mold myself out of trying to avoid that because we don't want you to see me. We want you to see Jesus. But I have to tell you that God, he gave me such a compliment the other day. He told me, and I just, just was so grateful. He said, you have prepared your people for this time, this perilous time 
He said, the reason why I gave you this series about mindset, you know, at the time I had no idea we were about to go into a pandemic. I had no idea that we were about to endure the kinds of things that we were enduring. But he said, this is how you equip your people is they have the appropriate mindset so that they have faith to respond. Because this is a time when people are breaking down left and right. And I wish I could say that it was over. I wish I could say that we're coming out of this. Circumstances are not necessarily going to get better. But, but those who are prepared are up to whatever the challenge is. And so it's very, very important that you uh, measure how much faith and that you have the quantity necessary. And then third, you have to keep the faith. It is all about the strength of your mindset, the strength with which you can withstand, you can overcome. Paul said, I kept the faith. You know, I love that with these. He's, he said, I'm ready. He said, you know what? I'm prepared. I've already, the Lord already told me I'm about to get out of here. He said, but I, I ran a good race. He said, you know, I fought a good fight, but most of all, I kept, I kept the faith. There's a level where you have to, you have to be tenacious. You have to be determined. You have to say, you know what? Mm -mm. Now, there may be a lot of things I have to put up with. I have to endure. Pain is a part of life. Disappointment. I mean, there are setbacks. Lord knows the trails are part of the process. But whatever, however, guess what? I am not going to let go. I'm not going to quit. I'm not even going to entertain the thought of backing off or backing down. I am firmly, tightly holding to the promise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, hey, look, I'm going to share my screen with you. I got to share my screen with you. Now, I'm about to go on a tirade, okay? <laughs> uh, yes, September 9th, 2022. You have to take an active role in your spiritual condition. And don't worry, you're going to get a copy of this. Don't try to write this down, okay, Kami? I want you to just focus for a minute. Listen, um, the conscious mind sometimes is the main hindrance to the word getting to your spirit because it's so active that it distracts the process of the word getting into your heart. So what I want you to do is, I want you to learn how to think through your spirit. That means concentrate on the truth that you're receiving. And don't worry about having everything and having the notes and nah, nah, no, no. I just want you to, I want you to take this in, all right, because the only word that is a power in your effect to you is the word that's in your spirit. I was telling you the other day, it is the stored word that you retrieve in a situation. And so uh, it's so important that you realize I got to be my main minister. I got to be the one that ministers to myself. And uh, it's so funny how that, do you know you listen to yourself more than anybody else? You even listen to yourself more than you listen to God. I mean, it's just inherently that whenever you say something, you hear what you say. It's so important because you could really program yourself by what you say. And it's so funny how the rest of you listens to what you say. And when you say something, the rest of you says, oh, that's what's up. 
That's why it's so important to not say the wrong things out your mouth. And it may seem harmless for you to say something like, man, I'm stupid. Man, I'm so crazy. I'm so dumb. I mean, it seems harmless to say that out your mouth, but it's not harmless. Because when you say that, the rest of you says, oh, really? We stupid? We dumb? And it's okay. We got to act like that. That's what we are. It's literally a situation where you can curse yourself by what you say out your mouth. If you ever notice the enemy is trying his best to get you to say things. He wants you to say things, utter things out of your mouth because he knows the power of it, you know. And, uh, you know, and he don't know by the time that he get into you can you say it. I'm so tired. Are we tired? Oh, okay, let me stop being tired. <laughs> he said, no, I was tired before I said it. Well, you're going to really be tired now. <laughs> And so really, it's so important <clears throat> because it's like, you ever like say something, right? And then when you said it, it resonated with you. I mean, it's like, it's like you were thinking it and you said it, but then when you said it, you really started to think it. Very, very powerful thing. That's why it's very important to confess the word and to uh, memorize the word. Blessed is the man who walks not in the council of God, who stands in the way of sinners, who sits in the seat of scornful. It's delights in the law of the Lord. And his law does he meditate. He makes the word. And folks, he says he, this will have tremendous tremendous effects and results. He will be like a tree that's planted by the river's water that will bring forth his fruit in the season. Whatever he does shall prosper. I'm telling you, the rest of you is waiting around for instructions. It's waiting around to find out, okay, what are we and what are we to do? Your capacity is tied to how you think. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And so you have to minister to yourself. Do you understand me? And you are responsible. You know, God holds you responsible. He holds you responsible for how much faith you have. He expects you to be on top of making sure. Take heed. What Paul told Timothy, he said, take heed to yourself. Pay attention to yourself. Now, you don't allow yourself to just think anything or be any kind of way. I mean, it's not in my best interest for me to be deflated or depressed or discouraged. I'm sorry, that's not in my best interest. I mean, I need to be energized. And therefore, I choose. Because what you think about has the most, uh, has the greatest bearing on what the nature of your thinking will be. When the greater portion of your thinking is spiritual as opposed to carnal, positive as opposed to negative, optimistic as opposed to pessimistic, when you got praise more than complaining, it's like you set the tone for the kind of thinker you will be. The kind of thinker you will be is the kind of person you will be. So you got to initiate within yourself the way you view things, the way you will perceive things. You know, it's like your mindset is has to be set. You know? In other words, a mindset is to set your mind. Everybody be on mute now. I need everybody on mute. Okay? You set your mind. By set, I mean position you are in, the, to be settled into a particular way of thinking. To set is to establish a place or location from where you're going to operate from. It means to identify a particular course of action. 
even, you know, without entertaining any change from it. It's like you are bent in a particular direction. You are intent in a specific way. You're fixed in a position and, and, and you have, you know, it's, it's, it's definite, it's unmovable. In other words, you dictate what assumptions you operate from. Okay? You assume things. And that precludes certain things. You know? You determine what beliefs you have about things. Your beliefs dictate what you assume or whatever you think. It's like you have a perspective on things, a way of looking at things. There's an overall mental orientation you have, a predisposition that you make up about how you see things, your outlook. And this is before you encounter anything. In other words, you're not, you're not like what James said, a reed blowing in the wind, you know? External circumstances and circumstance do not shift you off to what you are about. You are about one thing, faith, okay? okay you're not unstable. You're not double-minded, okay? You have a single focus. One thing have I desired of the Lord. I mean, it's like, it's like, whatever. This is what it is. It's like you, have, you are imposing your own way of processing on everything you experience. You have a specific set mode that's already predetermined before. Man. It's like... <laughs> There's never a day where you say, well, I hope I have a good, no, I have a good day every day. That's predetermined. The kind of day I'm gonna have today is already predetermined. I decided that already. Cause it's just not in my best interest to have a bad day. And so I choose not to. It's, it's amazing, you know, I was preaching on Sunday about that, that man, that man by that pool, I was preaching about that. And, it just was so enlightening to me that God showed me. He said, he didn't ask him what did he believe. He asked him what he wanted. Wilt thou be made whole? And I was like, God, shouldn't you be asking him uh, what does he want to believe? He said, he said, no. He said, because what you believe comes out of what you want. And you can predetermine what you want. As a matter of fact, Faith is the exercising of your will on the truth. And sometimes the reason why you can't be energized to believe is because you haven't decided and made a predetermination about what it is you want. That's where the enemy tricks you because he makes you think that God's word or the truth is not what you want, or it's not something you would want, or something that you even have the option to want. That was the main thing. That guy didn't even know that I could want that. No, you can be made whole. And you got mindset because you made it 38 years. But I want you to, I want you to want, I want you to believe more. You ain't believing enough. And believe it enough comes from wanting more. You got to want more. You know? In other words, long before anything transpires, the outcome was already decided upon. Everything is thought. Everything is thought in a way where it's assimilated in a pattern of thinking that's wholesome, good nature, and according to faith. It's like you had this way of thinking, the right thing, drawing from the reality of a word, using your mindset, including truths to shape your opinions on things. There's this constant application of your understanding to produce wise decisions and appropriate posture. 
It's like you resort to your knowledge of the word, your dependence on God as your source. You trust in his divine provision. You're always conscious of his divine presence and dwelt by his spirit. Everything follows a divine path, pattern. I mean, it's not a coincidence that Solomon said wisdom is the principal thing. And when all you're getting, get understanding. Why does he say that? Because that is where the power is. And you know, the greatest power is the power you apply to yourself, the power you exercise on your own. I mean, the Holy Ghost is unlimited in what he can do. He has all power, but that's like, un, uh, that's not even of any use to you until you direct it within yourself to yourself. Until you minister the word to yourself, that power is just out there potentially available, but it's not applied. It's like you can have a, a socket that has all kind of electricity in it, but you got to plug into it. You have to tap into it. And uh, it's so important for you to realize that you are the agent of God's power to yourself. You know, because you're locked in a mold. Over time, it becomes something. It becomes something you don't want to even think about. It's like your mind is locked in a particular direction and your thoughts automatically fall in line with the overall way that's according to the mindset that's already in place. It's no longer a question of whether you think bad thoughts or you dwell in false reality. It's like you're locked and loaded in what's true. It's like you're on a track. Amen. Where there's certain things that are just not on it. It's like the Bible talks about faith as being something that you're in. You are in faith. Faith is something you live by. Okay? You live by faith. Faith is something you are. The defining attribute, as I said earlier, of your overall makeup is that you are a believer. Believing is what has the greatest influence on everything. Relationships, I mean, attitude, reaction, everything comes back to believing. Believing is your permanent, all-time, all-encompassing thing. Because faith is the framework you operate in. It's the context you interpret things in. Faith is the basis of your thinking about any and everything that comes across your mind. There are so many things that you don't even consider because your faith makes them unthinkable outside the realm of even consideration. Yeah, faith causes some suggestions to not even be an option. Okay? Faith prevents certain kinds of things from ever being something you even consider a possibility. <laughs> it's like you would never even, it would never come up for consideration. Because when you're in faith, you're like, what? You know, like, like quitting. Quitting is something you don't even entertain. You know, it's like, might as well quit. What? Uh-uh. Faith says, there's no quitting. Is there a failure? I don't, I don't, I don't do alone fail. You know, you might fail. What? No, there's no failure in faith. I mean, don't get me wrong. That's not to say that things don't work out the way I want sometimes. I, mean, I experience misfortune, but failure? <laughs> no. See, faith gives you substance to hope for and evidence of what's not visible. That means that covers everything. Do you hear me? Faith covers everything. <laughs> that, that means that means I am equipped for 
any and every possible scenario I can ever encounter. It's either something I can hope for or it's something that is evident and I already have. Okay. Yeah. Um, some people get upset over their circumstances. You're never upset about your circumstances because faith allows you to anticipate something good and it gives you confidence about what is. I mean, I'm not denying that some things that might be unsettling or concerned, but faith allows me to be certain and secure in the truth of God's word. I guess what I'm saying is that the narrative is victory. I mean, <laughs> well, I got excited. I had to stop for a minute when I was writing this. This was coming. I had to stop for a minute, stand up, walk around for a second. But the narrative is victory. It does not matter how things begin or what happens in the process. The end is always when goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I'm, I'm blessed be the God who always causes me to triumph. I'm quoting scriptures right now. No weapon that's formed against me can prosper. And every tongue that shall rise up against me, God will respond by bringing condemnation. All things are working together for the good of those who love him. And they would say, even though weeping may endure for the night, joy is coming in the morning. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. The Lord delivers them out of all, in all these things. Not from all these things, but right in the middle of them are more than a conquering touch, separated from the love of Christ. I mean, that's my narrative. That's my life story. I'm either winning. <laughs> I won in the past. And I'm going into more victory. That's my narrative. God changed my narrative. When I got saved, he changed my narrative. You know, everything in my past is a testament to his goodness. Everything that's going on right now is an indication of his provision. And everything that will happen will be fulfillment of his promise. I didn't write that down. I just, I just got that just now. But you got it on tape, all right? <laughs> and by the way, you know, all of the morning manners are on YouTube. You can access all the morning manners on YouTube. And so... So I guess what I'm saying is this is the prevailing theme of our lives. This is the defining nature of our being. This is what we are. This is how we live. This is mindset. The mode we're locked in. The manner that never changes. This is the method we always employ. The strategy we always have. This is a distinctive way we operate, the tone that's permanently set. This is our form of existence, our manner of being. This is our way, our style, our condition, our approach. We are people of faith. That's it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> And, 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 and when you realize how important it is for you to be the one who is driving this ship, motivating, you are your coach. I mean, when you realize the ball is in your hands, when you realize this is all about what you do, I mean, God is counting on you. I mean, you have to step up to the plate. You have to decide what you're going to be and what you're going to do. 
You have to make up in your mind. I'm going to remain conscious of the truth. I'm not going to allow myself to be thinking no foolishness. I'm not going to allow myself to, to fail to receive and to know what is the true reality. I mean, I'm using the word. Amen. I'm, I'm living in the power of God. You know, I've been emphasizing believing. That's really what believing is. It is applying the word to myself. And whatever state or condition you're in, whatever your present disposition, you're responsible. Okay? We need to stop, you know, thinking other people have that much power over us. Only power people have over us is the power we give them. I think you need to decide, I'm not giving them any more power over me. Because they might they might use that power for good, but there's a possibility they could use it for bad. So why should I risk something like that? I mean, since I value myself and I want the best for myself, I'm going to let me decide how that power is going to be used. I mean, and if they got a problem with that, then you know, to the loo. See you later, alligator. Uh, you got a problem with that? Then that's your problem, not mine. Amen. And, and I'm not saying that, you know, people don't have good intentions. Sometimes they really have good intentions. They think they're helping you, but it's just not their jurisdiction. It's not their a fire. No. You have been given that position and don't give it to anybody else. And you say, well, they haven't been a problem for me in the past. True. But why risk it? <laughs> yeah. And I'm not saying all people are evil or all people are bad. You got to walk around paranoid. All I'm saying is that no one should have better understanding of what you need than you. And when the Holy Spirit ministers to you, he ministers to you personally. He ministers to you individually. I mean, I'm not denying people like myself or others, you know, we're trying to give you what the word, tell you what the Lord said. But there's some things that God only wants to talk to you and it's just a word that's coming directly to you. And nobody else can minister that to you but you. Like I said, you ever notice how when you say something, you stop and listen to it? Yeah. Because when you start to operate in the spirit, you're not operating from your conscious mind. You're operating from what is in your spirit. Or psychologists say your subconscious. You know. That's why you got to guard your heart. Guard your heart. Because out of it come the issues of life. And the conditioning that you have in your heart will dictate the kind of thinking that comes from your heart. And if, if you have conditioned your heart and the truth was coming from your heart, it's empowering, enriching. I mean, it's keeping, listen, I know some of y'all do a whole lot of stuff to maintain your health. I mean, you eat the right foods, you exercise. I mean, you got all kinds of strategies for how you can stay healthy. Let me tell you the most healthy thing you can do. The most healthy thing you can do is condition your spirit, your heart with the truth. Because there's nothing that affects the message that are coming from your brain. And you know your brain is managing your health. Nothing that has a greater impact on that than what's coming from your spirit. And so if you put, if you make the word what you focus on, what you think about when the word is really influencing the messages that are coming from your brain, now that right there, you know, that's why the Bible says things that sound um sound utterly impossible. Like, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. 
I can do all things through Christ. Listen, you cannot read the Bible and uh, follow what Jesus said and I believe in some really amazing superhuman things. If you have the faith of a mustard seed, you say to the mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast and see if you're on down, you share have whatever you say. What? Nothing shall be impossible. Nothing? Nothing shall be impossible to come that believes. <laughs> whatever he does shall prosper. Whatever he does shall prosper. See, this, this is the unlimited potential. This is the power that the first Adam had. See, Adam had dominion over the whole earth. That's why you only use a certain portion of your brain. You know that, right? You only use a small portion of your brain. Geniuses use a little bit more than you use. Why you got all that gray matter up there and it ain't being used? Because at one point it was operational. Jesus had full use of his brain. That's how he knew things nobody told him. The spirit periodically can tap into it, draw upon it. But it comes from the condition. And so the minister to yourself. Now I'm going to ask you a question. This is the first question. You know, how good a minister are you to yourself? How occupied are you with ministering to yourself? How, how much do you engage in your own spiritual well-being? You know, when you're guilty, if you go, that's because you're not um, applying the provision that God has given you by the blood of Jesus. And guilt is a sign, not that you did something wrong. You ain't menacing to yourself. Because if you minister the word to yourself, you realize I don't need to be guilty. I love that passage. I, I wish I could go there. I don't have time, but let me just describe it for you. In 1 Samuel 30, chapter, David comes back to the camp, right? And uh, his whole city's burned. He comes back with his men and all of the, all of the people, the, the, the wives and children have been taken hostage. Comes into a burnt down, burnt out city. He's looking around and, and his men start to grieve. They start to cry. David even cries the thought that his wife, his children, been taken hostage by these Amalekites. He cries until he has no more power to cry. I mean, it was a low point. He is complete. And then to top it off, the men look at him and say, you know what? This is all your fault. You're supposed to be leading us. You're supposed to be following God. And now you wouldn't make, and they thought about killing him. They thought about stoning him. That's what they were discussing. He's sitting there. He's already got his own issues because his children, his children, his wife gone too. But now he has to deal with the fact that he, he's taking the blame for it. I mean, if you ever want to talk about a time when he could have got down on himself, that was the time when he could have like beat up on himself. Do you do that? Do you beat up on yourself? It's absolutely the worst thing you can do to yourself is to beat up on yourself. But you know David was ready to be king. This was the final test for David. Let me tell you something. You are ready to step into God's purpose when you know how to minister to yourself. Your effectiveness to help others is dependent on how effective you are in managing yourself because the Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. At that point, man, when he could have broke, he could have, you know, he did, he said, you know what? He gave himself a good talking to. 
And I hope you talk to yourself. I hope that you sometimes got to give yourself a good talking to. He said, you know what? Yeah, man, this, this is terrible. Man, I am so concerned about my children, my wives. Man, I hate that I let the guys down. Man, but you know what? Look, man, you did your best. Man, that's life, man. And look, yeah, do not give up on yourself. You know, I still believe the promise God has for me. I still believe I'm, I'm destined to be king. God has been good to me. I know this is a bad time, but I've had good times in the past. And I believe God's going to help me in this. He's going to bring me out of this. I'm sorry. I'm not wallowing in my misery. I'm not laying down for nothing or nobody. Hey, man, like I said, I know I may have messed up, but I believe my best days are ahead. And you know what? I'm going to get up from here. I'm going to survive this. I'm going to overcome this. <laughs> Woo, well, I'm getting excited because have you ever been there? Have you ever been there, man? Look, when people were being critical of you, people were blaming you. And the only voice, only voice was the voice you had to speak to yourself. And I hope Oh, you are a minister to yourself. I love that psalm. I can't think of where it is right now. I, I, this is what happened when I get off my notes, but there's a verse in the Psalms where David talks to himself. He says, Soul, why thou cast down? <laughs> he says, So why are you depressed? He's like, talk to himself. He's like, wait a minute. Hope thou in God. Don't you have hope in God? I mean, wait a minute here. Ho, 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 wait a minute. I'm not going to get down too low because I got to get built myself up because I still got God. I still have, you know, I still got breath in my nostrils. There's a way this can turn around for my good. And you know what? I'm believing in the word and I'm believing in the promise that God has made to me. And because uh, I'm going to tell you something. I, I'm running out of time, but let me just say this. Some of you are tremendous encouragers. Some of you, there are people who would have given up if they hadn't had you in their life. Life. And some of the things you said to them, you are, you're just a gifted counselor in the sense that you can just, you know, you, people are just, they, they call you up and you just help them. And it's such a blessing. And you're gifted. I just want you to know, use the gift on yourself, okay? <laughs> you know, minister to yourself. Minister the word to yourself. You know, I pray that every time I come before you, I can give you what God's saying. But you can't depend fully on me. You got to be getting that word for yourself. Now, plan it to yourself. You know, some of you have forgiven people who've done things to you. Have you forgiven yourself? Anytime you got regret and remorse, that's an indication that you ain't forget yourself. You know, it's, it's really important to realize you're not to have any regrets. You're not to have any remorse. Because God forgave me. And if God forgave me, who am I to hold that against me? You know, it's like are there things that you believe about yourself that are in conflict with what God says and what God's word says? You know, um, I know what Psalm 42, 11. Hey, read Psalm 42 for me, okay? 
Not not right now. I'm just saying on your own where David's talking to himself. And today, as I leave you, because you got to go to work. <laughs> I want you to have some conversation with yourself. I want you to mess with yourself. I want you to program yourself in the truth. I want you to I want you to build yourself up. I want you to remind yourself of God's goodness. Remind yourself of what he has promised you. Remind yourself of how God has been so good to you. and How he has shown how precious you are to him. As I was preparing, as God just impressed upon me. I don't know who this is for, but you know, it's very uh, disconcerting for God that you won't let him love you. I mean, all that he does for you, and it never translates into you enjoying it, relishing it. You know, that's, that's the part. And you know what it is? You just so hard on yourself. You will not believe that you are up to what God has done for you, what he's doing for you. It's like what God said about the children of Israel. He said, you know, you do always err. You just always interpret what I do in a way where it never translates into just how much I love you. You ever met somebody like that? You ever try to love somebody who won't let you love them? I mean, you try to compliment them and they just deflect it. They cannot allow themselves. I mean, they have a birthday celebration and they're sitting there and everybody's trying to trying to make them feel good and appreciate it and they just can't let it happen. I want you to talk to yourself today. Now, not out loud. <laughs> all right? No. Okay, don't talk out loud. I mean, this is in your mind, all right? But I want to tell you, tell yourself stuff like, I appreciate you. I mean, you did a good job. I mean, it's great to get approval from people. But do you approve of yourself? I mean, do you? Do you like you? I want to tell you something. That's God's will. And whatever people, other people think, let them think that's bonus. The main thing is what you think about yourself. But my time gone. And y'all got to go to work. <laughs> Father, thank you. Thank you because in this next phase, we're not just going to think the truth. We're going to be the truth. And we're going to minister the word to ourselves. I thank you for the conversation we have today. Now, this is the beginning of a dialogue between God and us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We 